This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs, the Playbook. And I have the new generational entrepreneur, Nicole Lynn. She's my new bestie, as she just said, NFL agent, president of football operations for Clutch Sports. And she is a lawyer, but we're not going to hold that against her. Welcome to the playbook, Nicole. Thank you for having me, bestie. <laughs> All right on. I had to have you on the playbook. We've done a few things together. And every time that we do some sort of uh, interview or fireside chat or TV show, I just literally say, oh my gosh, more people need to know who Nicole Lynn is and her journey and the lessons that she's learned. You have written a book, Agent You, which is show up, do the work and succeed on your own terms. Well, that's easy to say, you yeah. know, and every time I talk to you, it's real easy to say, you know, to the young people, hey, you've got to show up and do it on your own terms. But there is some give and take as we learned in law school, right? Some quid pro quo going on. Uh, right. How do you decide when you can bend uh, your own values and when there are non-negotiables? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think early on in any situation, whether it's dating a guy or starting a new job, you have your non-negotiables, right? Like I tell my friends, I'm like, when you're dating a new guy, what's your non-negotiables? And then what are your 80-20, right? Like as long as he's got 80% and 20% here, even with a job, you want to come up with that early on. You don't want to be in the situation where you're having to decide, does this fall outside my morals? Does this fall outside my mission? You know, you want to know going in. And so it can be tough to navigate, um, but I think it's important to stand for exactly what you believe in and to not bend unless you're comfortable. And can those non-negotiable change, you know, through circumstance or uh, situations? You know, I'm blessed that my wife, uh, one of her non-negotiables was not height or else I'd have been <laughs> in big trouble, but that could be a non-negotiable for someone. And then uh, they get to know someone better. I, I I know some women that I dated that it wasn't non-negotiable. You know, they were five inches taller than me and they would tease me when I asked them out saying, sorry, I just don't date guys younger than me. And I mean, shorter than me. And they broke. Do you think there's situations where, you know, situation you learn and say, wait a second, maybe I was a little bit closed minded. This should not be a non-negotiable. Yeah. I think when you know better, you do better. So the more knowledge that you have, you're going to to change your perspective, right? That's something that if you're not continually changing, that means you're not growing. And so as we continue to grow and we learn more, our non-negotiables will change. Um, the things that we're okay with will change and really our outlook on life changes. And judgments and conditions come along with that. And, yeah. you know, you're not the normal looking sports agent. Uh, and I, you know, have been blessed to have that experience and also uh, learn my own lessons about how to get acclimated and integrated within the closed circle of sports agentry. And I had a little bit of a heads up because I ran Lee Steinberg Sports Entertainment and Lee had so many wonderful relationships that I could step into. I just try to put myself into your shoes uh, because I am so much older than you. And I'm thinking if Nicole walked in, you know, to the normal old school middle-aged white male uh, routine that I was present in, you know, what type of judgments and conditions would she have to overcome in order to one, have credibility, yeah. and then two, have an emotional attachment because so many people have closed minds that even if you are credible, you're a great lawyer and, you know, great, great school and you are articulate and beautiful and charismatic, that doesn't matter if I have a closed mind right. and have these, you know, uh, judgments and conditions that I put upon you. How have you been able to overcome what I consider a very closed circle and still very closed minded circle, uh, which still, by the way, I found out last time we spoke that mm -hmm. that you haven't even gotten a white client yet. Uh, <laughs> is that true? <laughs> Trying. I'm trying. That, that is true. That is true. So it's yeah, definitely not. Well, I've been telling everyone. I'm like every white kid I know. I was like, hold on a second. We got to break this down. <laughs> I got the best agent. I know Leo will probably kill me, but I'm out there pitching you now. Tolner's probably like, Dave, you can't do this. I'm like, I'm a bigger picture guy. This has to change right away. Totally. Totally. Yeah. So it's, it's definitely cool. I appreciate your support in that. Um, but to your point, your question, I, you know, I really think about it as unconscious bias, right? Yeah. We are all kind of over time, um, I don't wanna say we're created with unconscious bias, but our experiences sometimes cause them. And so it's not that we're overtly trying to be difficult because someone is different than us, it's just kind of deep inside. And so for me, like you mentioned, credibility is always an issue. 
because unconsciously people don't think of a woman as a sports agent. And so I don't immediately get their trust. So it doesn't matter how successful I have been. I feel like I always still have to prove myself, right? Because there's that unconscious bias. For me, it's kind of early on, I was okay with it. I was okay with the dad of a player, you know, really schooling me or asking me questions if I you know, really knew the game. And now I'm a lot more confident and I, and I'm not okay with it. It's one of my kind of non-negotiables. You know, I, I'm happy to say, look, you're not hiring me to be a coach for your player. I know the game. Great. You don't have to quiz me. You know, either you believe that or you don't. It's so great because I come from the other side of being blessed with the assumption that, you know, everything and it's equally as dangerous, right? Because you have to be able to tell someone, I, I, I mean, weird stuff. I worked with Joe Montana's kids uh, with the Clarkson stuff, right? And Joe starts asking me quarterback drop questions, you know, is, you know, and I'm looking at him going, do you realize who you're talking to? I don't have a gosh darn clue yeah. whether you should turn or square your shoulders or not in a drop, uh, or you get interviewed as a sports agent and, you know, they're asking you about some baseball thing that happened the night before. And I, early on, when I didn't learn to say, I don't know, I'm like, oh, well, good thing the guy didn't get hurt in the interviewer at ESPN is like, you know, he blew out his knee and he's out for maybe his career. I was like, oh, I'm not that hurt. He's not dead, you know? <laughs> anyway. yeah, yeah. Um, to, Be to comfortable that- in knowing that you don't know. Be comfortable knowing what you don't know. I think that's part of the reason why I've been successful. I'm comfortable when there are moments I'm not going to know things. I never played the game. doesn't matter how much film I break down. I can never tell you what it feels like to be on that field. So, yeah. And you speak that. And I, and I love that and have learned that myself uh, to be able to tell people, hey, I don't know, but I can get the answer for you. I'm a really yeah. resourceful person. And that resourcefulness will help do what I do. Now, you're not only educated in the law, you're educated, you have a series seven, 63, the financial end of things, which is a huge component of creating a legacy brand, et cetera. What are, you know, so many kids I'm sure come up to you today and say, Hey, I want to be agent you, right? I want to be a sports agent, just like you. Do I need to go to law school? Should I go to business school? Should I get my series seven and 63? Yep. All those questions we get still daily. What advice do you get when someone says, what should I do to be a sports agent? I think first pick the sport. Every sport has different requirements. So as an NFL agent, I have to have a postgraduate degree. NBA agents do not. So for me, my postgraduate degree of choice was a law degree, but you could have a master's. I think getting a law degree only makes sense if you maybe want to practice because it is very expensive. If you tell me I'm literally just checking in a box so I can become a sports agent, then go get your eight month sports management degree and keep it rolling. And so I think that's kind of step one in figuring out what's the sport, you know, they're not all the same. Yeah. I think I always tell kids the two, two things I know about all agents is one, you got to be able to get a client and two, and two, keep it. (laughs) I don't know which one's harder. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, looking like this, I had great practice in my dating career of trying to get a client and keep her. Uh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it. It worked for me later on in life. Now, in the book, you're writing in details some serious lessons um, and about showing up, uh, which is really important to me. I think a lot of people are afraid, and you're not one of them, but I think that most people are afraid to show up, meaning that you're full of light and you're not afraid to liberate your light, to liberate other people's light. And a lot of people in your position do cower down to make others feel good or or feel accepting. Uh, Instead, you use what I would uh, consider a powerful position of showing up, letting your light shine. Why is it that so many people use fear to diminish their own capacity to make other people feel good? Yeah, I mean, I think, I don't know what the reasoning for it is. I mean, I think there's, especially with women, there's a lot of imposter syndrome that we may have you know, even that I come off very confident to you, that doesn't mean in moments that I'm not questioning my own abilities or having a little bit of that imposter syndrome, but I just made a decision very early on that I was going to show up every single day as my authentic self, you know, and, and not just show up, but take up space, right? Taking up space, meaning my ideas will be heard. My ideas are good. You know, you will appreciate what I'm saying. I will have a seat at the table, and so it's, it's beyond just showing up and being you, but it's saying, hey, um, you're also going to hear me. In, in this world of amplification, you know, I remember Deepak Chopra, someone that 
uh, I look up to, mentored me, I got to know, I sit on the Transformational Leadership Council with him, but I got to speak to his daughter. And what I realized was I started to glamorize and you know, almost to humanize Deepak Chopra mm. as we do athletes and people like you that have big personalities and we start glaring over the human aspect of imperfection. And she told me, I, I said, oh my God, it must be amazing to have your dad. Like my dad was gone when I was five years old. I couldn't, I was Deepak Chopra was my dad. And she said, David, she said, I came to him one time. I was distraught. I needed like all of this advice. I was crying and I walked into his study and he's, you know, writing his book and he looks up at me and he goes, are you kidding me? Go talk to your mother. <laughs> right. And it, re and it hit human. me like the man's human. And I think it becomes difficult as we elevate our brands and we have these wonderful glowing personalities and we come across on this podcast, people are looking like, oh my gosh, the perfect woman. She loves sports. She makes money. She's gorgeous. You know, and yet I know you're human because I am. Right. And Absolutely. it's worse now because of the amplification in media and branding, not just the athletes face this, but you're facing it as well. How do you help the client know that, look, I am not perfect right? Managing expectations to the negative that, look, we're going to work together, but I'm going to miss things. I'm going to do my best. I'll try to find you the right answers. Or do you ever illuminate to them or do you play the perfect role? Definitely don't play the perfect role. You know, when something doesn't go as planned, I like to take accountability up front. I think it's important to show them what that looks like so that they'll hopefully emulate that, emulate that in their own lives. You know, I am a human. I will forget things. I won't do things perfectly. You know, I will have moments where I can't take your call or maybe I need a mental health day. Um, I will say I've found that I try to hide a bunch of that sometimes in my career and I'm trying to do a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just trying to trying to just keep it real. And I, and I do that on my social media too. I share, you know, my successes and then my biggest failures. I'm very transparent. I want people to see the full picture. It's not it, being a sports agent. It's not all glitz and glam. Yeah, that's for sure. I've transitioned from it for that reason. Now, there's been a huge rule change that I think is going to affect agentry a lot because it affects the monetization of an athlete before we get our hands on them. And it really opens doors for manipulation uh, yeah. of the system. I'm seeing it already. When I saw the Bryce article that he's already up to almost a million dollars, I'm thinking, gosh, you know, if I'm a huge Alabama uh, supporter, how easy it for me just to create a deal for a half a million dollars for a kid and call it licensing um, <laughs> or signing. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, you're going to have another ego layer. Uh, you know, it's one thing when you get a kid who just wants to make money and save his family. I can't imagine in putting myself in a position of, you know, there's going to be kids coming out five, ten million dollars uh, in their pocket. Yeah. And it'll change your negotiation of representation to attain that, that client. But I think managing that client becomes a whole nother ball game. What do you foresee as some of the challenges uh, because you'll end up with someone who already has a brand and has already made money? You know, I think some of the challenges will be breaking bad habits. You know, when I represent a player, maybe they haven't, maybe they don't come from money, they never had money. I can start to really implement that financial literacy and good habits. You know, now with NIL, a guy can start their freshman year making money. Maybe I don't sign him for four more years and he has, maybe he'll have bad spending habits. You know, those are things that I'll have to help almost quote unquote clean up. And so there's that. And then also just making sure they're protected generally. Like, did they pay their taxes on the money that they got? Right. I feel like I'm going to have to do some backtrack. Okay. These last four years, did you pay? Did you report it correctly? Did it run through your LLC? Did you do it as a normal business? Any exclusivity provisions that I don't know about that you signed in college when I do an endorsement deal for you in the NFL, maybe they forgot. They signed some little agreement at this small mom and pop shop place. And now we're getting sued. So I think it's going to take a lot of like, kind of backtracking. Yeah, and I think the vetting side. And then what about also just in the negotiation, you know, one of the difficult things I had as uh, an agent, my, my favorite client was a guy named Myron Roll. You mm -hmm. may remember won the Rhodes Scholarship. And I thought, here's an ideal client, graduated college early. He was yeah. the number one recruit into college and went to Oxford instead of into the league. And I thought, this is so easy. But I had to deal with number one is 
siblings. He had five brothers, all with M's. And back then, Smartwater just came out and they gave the Jennifer Aniston deal to her. And I had to deal with all the brothers calling me going, you're not doing, he's so much smarter than Jennifer Aniston. I'm like, she's on Friends, bro. Like, are you <laughs> kidding me? Like, I don't care how smart, I'd hire her to, to brand endorse me over Myron. And he, I don't care if it was sure. Einstein's catalog, you know, it doesn't make sense. But I, I foresee now, if you get a mediocre player, you know, Myron was drafted in the sixth round. He ran, a, a unfortunately, a 40 that was about the same as I ran in college. Uh, and, you know, not good for to be a number yeah. one draft choice with that kind of speed. Uh, but moreover, now you have to deal with the ego of I should be drafted higher. Look, I'm already being paid this because in their minds, they're young and their families see the yeah. money. And all of a sudden you're getting them a $30,000 signing bonus in a late round. And they've already made 10 million because, you know, they're an amazing college quarterback, like a Tim Tebow. Imagine how much money Tim would have made. Oh gosh, I can't even... And right. He's not that great of a, a professional quarterback. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't drafted as high either, but how are you going to deal with the management of that type of value assessment when they're completely divergent of each other? Yeah, I mean, I think managing expectations up front is critical. You know, even with NIL, sports agents can represent players in the NIL front, like we're allowed to. Um, but even when those conversations happen, it, it's managing expectations. The people that are going to get the most money are going to be your skill position guys and your quarterbacks. So if I have a lineman that I'm sitting in front of, I'm letting them know up front, here's what you should expect. And I'm also educating the player on how our NFL team is going to view this. Or is it affecting your draft stock? You know, you, a team may not want a lineman that's on every commercial. And so, you know, it's, it's all about also educating them um, in the beginning. All right. Last three questions. One, do you have an agent? And if or if not, what do you look for in your agent? And third, if you don't have an agent, can I be him? <laughs> um, I actually have a literary agent for my book, and it's a woman. Uh, her name is Shannon, and she's amazing. What I looked for in an agent is someone that is knowledgeable in the field, that's someone that has connections, and then you know within the industry, and then someone that I just felt right, someone I could trust. Right? That sometimes it's just a gut feeling. You know, most of the people that athletes meet with check those first couple boxes. They've got the connections. They know how to do the job. It's really that third. How do they add value? How do I feel with them? Can I trust them? I would say I've written, obviously, several books and have a literary agent of my own. And yeah. I joke around that I think the literary business is so much dirtier than sports and entertainment any day of the week. It is just such a difficult, I mean, because talk about playing with uh, emotions of people in yeah. hopes of people. They take advantage in the literary world, you know, people will write, write your book and tell you all these things. And, you know, I have so much dummy tax poured into my ego from writing books and finally realized, you know, hey, you know, I, I was so super happy when I got my first publishing deal and then yeah. realized, God, I should have just, I made so much more when I published it myself. This was all, e this was all ego. Um, yeah. Anyway, you are a master of ego. We know that it edges goodness out of your life and you have brought so much goodness to so many people. And I, as a former agent and someone who is a sports executive, we need more women like Nicole Lynn. We need more people like Nicole Lynn in the business. You are what the future should behold in sports. Our favorite NFL agent, president of football operations for Clutch Sports, Nicole Lynn, my future client, uh, for uh, I'll figure out what I'm going to represent her for, but totally. I'll figure it out. I'll bring her deals. She'll have to sign me. Uh, You're promoting my book. You're my you got well, agent my, to promote my book. <laughs> president, president of my company is a woman, so you get the best, best of both worlds. And I'm going to get her a first white football player. That's my goal. It's a mission. Yeah. It'll be up there in the Dave Meltzer bio. Thank you so much. Yeah.